you have said that if uh, the economy, the data come in about as they have been, you don't re necessarily see a need for another rate cut in September. But monetary policy works with long and variable lags, as we know. Mm -hmm. And now it appears with these additional tariffs from China coming on this morning that trade wars aren't going to be going away anytime right. soon. So when you look at the economy six, eight months right. from now, are you still confident that you don't need a, a, accommodation? Well, that's the key question, right, is, is we know trade policy uncertainty has been weighing on the outlook. You know, we talked to our business contacts. We've seen already um, business spending be weakened because of that um, tariff. Uh, situation and the uncertainty around the tariff situation. And as this continues, we have to keep monitoring whether firms are going to continue to react the way they have and with caution, whether it'll begin to spill over in their hiring plans as well as their spending plans and whether that'll then spill over to the consumer sector. And so I'm very focused on those risks to the outlook. So again, we do have to be forward looking and that's a key risk, a downside risk to the outlook going forward. And I'm, I'm very attuned to that. And you know, when I talk to my contacts, that's one of the key things that I'm asking. Are you changing investment plans? Are you continuing on your hiring plans? Wages are moving up, which is a good thing. Consumers have been very robust in terms of their spending over this period of uncertainty. And that's the kind of thing that we need to keep watching. But again, I want to take the time that we have until the next step of see and beyond to continue to assess things. And if it does turn out that those risks are manifesting themselves in a wider, um, across a wider part of the economy and things are stepping down, then Right, that's an argument for why we might need to recalibrate our policy downward because you, by do doing nothing in that scenario, you, you in a sense are tightening policy, and so that's the key question. Again, I think it's very important that we watch the data. Um, if we were ever data dependent before, we have to be uber data dependent now and really be, be reacting to what's happening in the economy, not just as changes in sentiment, because uncertainty causes people to be sort of like, ooh, I'm a little bit concerned about what's going forward, but are they actually making decisions based on that uncertainty and, and in that case then we might have to move things well, what are business around. leaders telling you do they say things have gotten worse that uh, they might be seeing a step down because of the impact of what's going on so every business contact I talk to across the wild strath always mentioned trade policy uncertainty um, and the tariffs as being something that there is a concern of theirs majority of the firms that I talk to still say they're on their plan for investment for the year. They're certainly still seeing tight labor markets. They're still trying to hire um, and they're increasing wages to retain and to attract workers. The larger firms that have more multinational connections are affected by both the slowdown in global growth and the trade policy uncertainty. And they're reassessing their plan. So again, it's sort of a mixed picture, but I would say that our firms, at least in the fourth district, and we have, you know, exposure to manufacturing and to trade, have been more robust and been able to re to actually respond pretty well to this uncertainty. They're very concerned about it and, and you know, we have the next potential leg here of uh, the expansion of the tariffs to the consumer side, I think that could be a catalyst for, for changes in plans. But we haven't seen it yet, and I'd like to wait until we actually get some more information on how firms are reacting to that before responding in advance to it. Suppose you have to respond. Suppose you cut rates. This isn't a demand issue or a cost of credit issue, so how does monetary policy help? Well, it would be a demand issue at that point. If firms stop spending, right, and then they stop hiring, you know, or weaken their hiring, and we see consumers pulling back because of the caution, that is a demand issue. And in that case, lowering interest rates as the equilibrium rate in the economy goes down is the appropriate thing to do. But again, we need to be looking at that hard data, looking at the information we gain from our business context. I think this information that we're gaining from Main Street when we're going out and talking to businesses and talking to consumers and talking to labor market participants is going to be very important to us as we evaluate how we go forward here. When you look at what's happened, uh, global Wall Street and uh, the uh, pricing in of many rate cuts going forward. Uh, do you worry that the f too much burden is being placed on you and the Fed to save the economy? So there's no doubt that uh, bond investors you know, have a more pessimistic view of the U.S. economy than perhaps some of the economists do and, and I do. Um, and we have to take a signal from that. We, we can't just ignore what's happening there. 
Um, but there's also other reasons that those bond yields are down. One is that the U.S. is a safe haven flow and that, relatively speaking, our economy is doing better than other places in the, in the global economy. Um, I think the, you know, the Fed, my, my main focus always when I'm setting policy is where are we? Where is the economy relative to our dual mandate goals? They're the beacons that we try to strive for and we set our policy in order to, to hit those goals. And that's how we can do monetary policy, I think, in the best way, systematically focusing on those goals, looking at the data, doing the best evaluation we can of where the economy is going, and making sure that our monetary policy is uh, appropriate for hitting those goals and maintaining those goals. There's other policies that can be brought to bear um, in the economy. We know workforce development issues are something very relevant in the fourth district, of course, you know, making sure that people have the skill sets to actually take the jobs that are available and to train for the future jobs. So there's other policies that can be, you know, brought to bear to make sure that in the long run our economy is healthy and that everyone can participate in a healthy economy. But again, monetary policy, dual mandate goals, that's got to be our focus. You were for a long time concerned that inflation would break out uh, as the economy expanded. Have you given up on that idea? So I think inflation actually is in a pretty good spot. We're, we're clearly, you know, below our mandate, but, you know, we've been pretty stable on the price front. And new research actually coming out of the Cleveland Fed, which looked at acyclical fat parts of uh, the inflation prices and the cyclical part actually shows that as the labor markets have gotten tighter, those cyclical prices have been moving up. So I'm more confident that we're going to see this gradual increase of inflation back to our goal um, because it, it does seem to be behaving the way we do. We may have to wait a little longer because there is a large part of inflation that is real acyclical, doesn't move with the labor market because of other factors that affect prices. So again, I think patient is called for. I'm not that concerned that we've been below target for quite a while. I think there's ways to explain that in terms of how deep the recession was and going forward. And I think inflation is pretty much moving up back a long path. Well, as one of the bigger inflation hawks on the Open Market Committee, uh, what do you think of the idea of letting the economy run a little hot, um, an asymmetric higher inflation rate for a while? Uh, there are various strategies to do that, but it all comes down to letting inflation run above your target for right. a while. So I don't character myself, uh, characterize myself as a hawk. I'm trying to always balance our dual mandate goals in terms of price stability and full employment and trying to calibrate policy to hit those in a balanced way. Um, so again, I do think that it's important that we always focus on those goals and take a balanced approach when we approach those. I always want to strive, if I had to pick an animal, to be an owl. <laughs> a wise owl, I presume. Hopefully. The question here is always whether you're a, a hawk or a dove, so I'm the ornithologist here trying to figure <laughs> these things out. Do you worry, though, that um, people are getting too used to the idea that there is no inflation in the economy. Obviously, the Fed keeps a very close eye on inflation expectations, mm -hmm. both consumers and markets. Have you lost control of inflation? So I don't believe we have. I think in the long run, inflation is a monetary phenomenon. I do think that some of the dynamics in inflation have changed. And in fact, the Cleveland Fed has established a center for inflation research precisely because there's a lot about the dynamics that we still need to know about. I, I'm, I'm confident that, you know, inflation will move back up to target, and I'm confident that the Federal Reserve is going to set our policy rate to try to hit those dual mandate goals and maintain them. Do you leave the policy rate as low as it is or even lower for as far as the eye can see? So, you know, there's a lot of research that's gone into what, where the actual interest rate in the economy, the equilibrium interest rate in the economy is. And there is real good reasons to think that it's lower now than it was in the past. Demographic reasons, uh, demand for safe haven assets or safe assets. And so there's a reason to think that interest rates are going to be lower going forward than they were in the past. And so, yes, interest rates likely will be lower than in the past. And then the question is, well, how do you manage monetary policy around that? And that's part of what the framework study of the Fed is about, all about that we've been doing for the last year or so, really is, OK, if we're in a low interest rate environment, what's the best way for the Fed to actually set policy to hit our dual mandate goals? And do you have an answer yet? I think there's certain things you could do. I mean, I think, you know, when you think about the inflation uh, rate and, you know, the conversation we've been having about, you know, how we hit the goal, where we go, you know, just thinking about it in terms of instead of a point 
estimate, like 2%, maybe think about that as a range. Not necessarily making up for past deviations, but think about it in terms of a range, and that may actually be a better way to communicate where we are relative to our goal and going forward, given the precision with which right, the measurements are and how we can hit that and maintain it over time. Uh, one of the questions that's come up is whether or not we can talk ourselves into recession. You have a lot of tweets coming out of Washington. You have uh, negative comments coming out of companies with earnings season, and of course you have Wall Street. Mm -hmm. um, absent that, would we be in trouble? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're at a very lengthy re re recession, uh, recovery now. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting uh, thing that you bring that up because I've had a number of business contacts use that exact same thing. I think we're talking ourselves into a recession. And they're basing that on the fact that they look at their order book and they look at their loan demand and they look at, you know, depending on what sector they're in, and they say, look, I look at things and I think, you know, we're about on trend. I think the growth is on trend. And yet they turn on the television and they read what's happening in the financial market and they say, wow, you know, people are really cautious. So there is this difference between perceptions and sentiment and the reality on the ground so far. But I do think that, you know, if firms do take into account, oh, things are more, you know, uncertain than I've seen in the past, that can have a real impact on investment spending, hiring, et cetera, going forward. And that's a key risk that we need to be attuned to going forward.